Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. For this video, I'm going to show you guys how to decorate your own beading needle case. Now, there are several different ways to do this, but my favorite way is the circular netting stitch. Now, I did a video similar to this years back. I went to the Dollar Tree and I found in the nail art aisle, they were selling nail art in these tiny little glass bottles, super small, and I ended up beading those. And I did a video of it, and I will put the picture to that video up now. That was such a fun project, and I have to say, I'm not a mass production maker of jewelry. When I come up with a design, I might make it four to maybe six or seven times at the most, and it's kind of rare for me to go back to that project, and if I do, it's because I loved it and enjoyed doing it so much. But that bottle was something that I could see myself making over and over again. It was a lot of fun. So we're going to be doing something similar to that but we're going to be using a lot more beads and we're going to be doing the cap differently because I I did not the cap on that was just a plastic plug that I just put a bead loop through but this one we are going to be decorating a cap and by the way in case you didn't know the dollar store right now has larger glass bottles in their craft area but um, I bought some of them and the diameter of them is bigger than this here so if you were to do this stitch on those you would have to increase the base of this in order to um, cover the edges so I'm doing six seed beads in the center you would probably have to do eight at the base of this stitch alright so let's go over this I am using a needle case from Potomac beads and I really recommend that you get this same exact needle case from them so you get the same results because if you go around to some other place and get a needle case you're probably going to have different results because this has a small diameter you want to make sure that um, this is going to work out for you so I really recommend that you go and get this one and I will link this one down below it's very inexpensive and I saw that they actually have a two pack so that's great you can make one for yourself and one for a friend if you have a beading friend so for the materials for this you're going to need a size 10 beading needle you're also going to need fire line and you're going to need to cut two lengths for the case part you will need to cut eight feet of thread. That is a lot, I know. A lot of bracelets take about eight feet of thread, but there is a lot of work that we'll, we will be doing. And um, this here will take eight feet of thread. And for the cap, you will need to cut three feet of thread. And I'm using eight pound, but you could do six pound, whatever you like. And you're also going to need seed beads. Now I'm using Toho seed beads, which are just a little bit bigger than Miyuki. Miyuki has more of a flattened like pony bead shape but Toho's have a taller look to them and so uh, they worked really good for this project and I do recommend that you use Toho for this project if you do and try use Miyuki you will probably see gaps thread gaps and you don't want that so I recommend that you use the Japanese Toho seed bead and you could probably also do Mill Hill if you have some of those and you will need a lot of beads I'm using a lot here uh, I'm not sure in how many grams but when they, these were in a tube it was like that much seed beads in my tube it was a lot and I'm doing four different colors they're all Toho I have an orange a purple a bronze and a turquoise Picasso that I am doing this is the list of materials and I will post the list down there in the description bar along with the link for the needle case so I made this color mix here of 11 Toho seed beads but if you want you can work in separate piles but I just mixed all mine together and I'm doing four different colors but you can do two different colors if you want three Four, like I'm doing you can do five six seven eight you can do ten different colors it's totally up to you so we're gonna start by making the center bottom of my needle case and to do that I'm picking up six eleven oh seed beads okay and it's gonna be a circle right here in the bottom now this is a very thin tube that we're doing but if you're doing the glass bottles at the Dollar Tree you're probably gonna have to start with eight 11 oh seed beads for the center so there's my uh, six again six beads I'm going to slide these down we're gonna leave a six inch tail because we will will come back and reinforce this okay so I just like to go like this measure my tail 
I find the six inch mark right here. Hold this with my fingers, take my needle, pass through all of these beads like this. Don't let go of the six inch mark. Okay, and then I slide these down right there. And if you did let go of your mark, you can just go ahead and remeasure. And mine is a little long, so I'm just going to tug on that there. Give it six. Okay. Put that to the side. So now we have this circle here. And I'm going to tie a surgeon's knot, so I'm going to go over and under. Bring this down. And you want these beads to pop out, which I'm going to do that now, so that it's tidy when I go to go back through these so let's see you want it to look like that kind of looks like a little flower okay and then go over and under two times one and two and bring this knot down and make sure that it falls in the right place okay right there so now I'm gonna take my needle and let's see I'm right here my knot is right here. I'm going to pass through this seed bead. Okay. I'm going to pick up my next color and I will do orange. One orange and then I'm going to do three turquoise and one orange. So I'm picking up five seed beads because I have one seed bead right here that we're working off of and this will give me a total of six seed beads in this circle and then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through going through this seed bead I'm going to go through the next seed bead so I'm actually sticking uh, passing I'm sticking my needle through two uh, passing out here and doing this is just preparing me for the next uh, seed bead ring that I'm going to do okay so pulling through here we have that ring. Now I'm going to repeat this again, but I'm not going to pick up another orange because I'm going to be sharing this bead. So I'm going to be doing, going back through these two. So I only have to pick up four beads now. So I'm going to pick up an orange and three turquoise. Like that. Go through the orange. And then go through this next turquoise. And step up, or not turquoise, bronze, good grief through the orange, the the bronze there, and the second bronze because we're stepping up for the next ring. Passing through. There we go. Okay. Make sure you pull this snug. You don't want to see loose thread. Pick up another orange and three turquoise. Same thing. We're going to pass through this orange seed bead. Okay through this bronze and through the next bronze like that through there and if your last one got loose what you can do is hold on to this tail go like this tighten the beads up here okay so that it tightens these up and then pull that and all of them are tight and if you want you can have that center seed bead pop out like a star Okay, so like that one right there. See that one's doing it? Just like that. Okay, I'm going to continue doing this all the way around. So again, I pick up an orange and three turquoise, four beads. I go through this orange. Okay, and I turn and go through this bronze that I'm coming out of. And I also go in through the next bronze, like that bring all my thread through, pull this tight, we just did it four times and now we're going to do it the fifth time. So pick up an orange, three turquoise, go through this turquoise here, not turquoise, orange, good grief, I'm sorry I have so much going on today. Okay, through that orange that bronze and the next bronze and we're now actually stepping up to the next part so while I'm going through here I'm just gonna go through the orange 
and you'll see because we're going to be doing our sixth one and this is the close of this and this kind of looks like a little flower the base of this see have that there so now if you count there's six orange seed beads that's perfect that means I only have to pick up three turquoise to finish this pattern so it's continuous all the way around three turquoise through this orange through the bronze and through this orange okay now I have this so I'm gonna step up by passing my needle through these two turquoise beads okay pull that tight just like that and now we're going to do the next color which is going to be purple and this time I'm picking up five 11 O's just like that all the same color so this is my fourth color and I'm gonna pass my needle through this C bead right there the next point just like that pick up another five okay go through the next petal because it kind of looks like a flower doesn't it okay we're now going to do another five purple just like that and through the next turquoise bead there, the one that's po pointing out in the middle pull that snug see that there? isn't that pretty? I love these colors another five just like this and through the next point Okay, another five. And there is a little trick I have to speed things up. I will show you. There's five. Through the next point. Now see, instead of pulling your thread all the way through, pick up another five. This is a little trick to make things faster. Because, you know, we're, we're stretching our arm out. We have eight feet of thread here. So every time you pick up beads go through a, a, a bead you're stretching your arm out really far but to make things a little bit easier after you go through that bead pull a little bit out pick up five more beads and go through the next bead now we're at the start of this so I have to reposition my needle by going up through these beads the next three purple okay I'm coming out the point pull this through I gotta get past my second thread there I'm having a restriction here I don't know why I've done this multiple times oh you know what I'm doing this with a different thread I guess the fire line has this like has a, a coating on it it's preventing me from doing that what did I use to make this uh I think I used a nylon thread when I first designed this. Whenever I, um, ex whenever I experiment and I'm designing new projects, I don't use Fireline because it's so expensive. I use a cheaper thread, like a nylon thread or something like that, that I'm not too crazy about, just to get the design idea figured out, right? And then I cut it apart and I come back and show you how to remake it. Okay, so there we go. So what we have right now isn't that pretty this is the base to so many things you can make a lot of stuff with just that right there all right now oh you know what I'm gonna pop these seed beads in so they look tidy see how it kind of looks like a six point star and I'll pull that tight again okay now we're gonna do the next color so I'm doing four colors and I just did my fourth color so now I have to go back to my first color which is bronze now I'm going to do five bronze okay and then I go in through this point point. 
just like that. And do you see how this one's not pointing? That's okay. Don't worry about that. But from, like, from the purple, when we started the purple, from that point on, we are going to be picking up five beads at a time and going through the center bead there. Okay, and we're going to be doing this over and over, going through each color until we get down to here. And then we're going to change up the bead numbers so we can make this tight around the rim there. Okay, five beads again. But I'm going to go with you guys a little bit so you can see what this looks like. There's five again through the next point. And I might speed this up because it is simple. But I just want to show you what it looks like as time goes by, repeating this same step over and over. Five through the next point. And by the way, the top for the lid is made the same way as this. Okay, it's made the same exact way. I just had to change the colors up so that the colors, once I got here, I had to make sure that the colors were continuous. And I'll talk about that when I get to that point. But um, you will be doing this same, the start here, and beading just like this for this too. Okay, but I'll talk about the color problem <laughs> later on, on how you get your colors just right. Okay, so five beads again. the next point I'm gonna try that little trick again let's see if I could do it I want to say my fire line has a coating on it almost like beeswax and I think it might be resisting oh, you know what I have these uh, matte sea beads I'm using too so I'm gonna go through the point and I'm at the start which means every time I'm at the start I have to step up by passing through the seed beads which brings me out the middle bead there okay working right now but I am using shiny beads okay now when you pull this it's gonna start to cup on us see pretty cool huh but right now it's just round once you keep going it's gonna form a cylinder shape and what I like to do is put this directly onto the tube after I get like an inch of it made up and I work on the tube Okay, after the bronze is orange, five orange, through the next point, well, it's not a point anymore, is it? It's rounded. So through the next middle bead, right there, in the center of five, through here, pull it tight as you go five again and I'm gonna do this all the way around and I think I will fast forward this So I've made it all the way around I just picked up five I'm gonna go through this bronze and like I said, every time you start a new ring, you have to pass through the next three seed beads. Pull this tight. Make sure all of these are flipped up because this is now turning from a bowl to a cup. Okay, and it's going to be like a sleeve that we're going to slide over top of our case. Now after orange is going to be turquoise. Pick up five and go through the next middle bead. Okay, I'm going to do that time, uh, time saver trick again. Pick up five, go through the next center bead. Okay, this always wants to flip down, don't let it. Make it stand up, pull it tight, five again, and do this all the way around. Ok, 
Okay, so I'm now closing up my turquoise row here. So I'm going back around where I started, passing up for the next three beads and pulling all my thread through. Okay, pull this tight, make sure that all these beads here are sitting on top because the that's the last color we did and you want all of them to be on top. So this is what we have so far and we have one more row to go and we will have done these four colors twice after the purple row. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up five purple, one, two, three, four, five, go through the next center bead, and I'm going to do this all the way around. Alright, I'm closing up the purple now, so I have to go through this turquoise and up through the next three C beads with my last color here, which is purple. Pull the tail through. Okay, and pull this tight. Now let's go ahead and slide this on to the end here. That's what it looks like so far. If you want, you can keep this here on the tube and bead on it. But right now it's kind of short, so I think I'm going to add a few more rows before I start beading on my uh, tube or case. Okay, I'm going to do the next color now after purple is bronze. So pick up five bronze and go in through the next bead. So as you could see, this is very simple. You're gonna be repeating this stitch over and over. And uh, I think it would be really cool if you do have several different colors, but in tiny amounts, to do this in a rainbow of colors. It would look really cool. Okay, just like that. And also, as you could see, I have my finger stuck in it right here, so you can hold it like this and beat it, but it is going to get pretty long eventually and um, I do like to put mine on my tube so I'm gonna keep going picking up five be seed beads at a time going through that middle bead and then once I get all the way around I have to step up again by going through the middle bead and then up through three seed beads so I'm back and I just wanted to show you I kept on beading and I'm now at the point where when I put this on here you'll notice that it grips onto this okay that's the point that you're gonna want to put this onto your tube you could feel a, a friction that it's like gripping on there okay and now I'm gonna continue stitching I'm back and I ran into some complications and I know exactly what wrong and I'm gonna explain it to you guys so when I design jewelry or other beaded things, I like to use crummy thread or bead stringing material because I hate wasting fireline. It is so expensive and for me to cut it up every time I make a new design is just crazy. So I made this the very first time and it worked up perfectly. I had absolutely no problems at all. It went so well that I just thought, you know, I'm going to remake it for the second time because I only did it one time in the tutorial and so I went along stitching and everything was going great during the filming and you know while I was not filming and then I got to the end and the first time I made this I ended it with this turquoise row right here but this has gotten so short because of the fire line that I had to add two more rows. So when I first designed this, I used a very cheap nylon, not Nymo, it is not Nymo, it's a nylon thread. And um, it had a tad bit of stretch to it, but not much. But Fireline has absolutely no stretch at all. So um, when I got all this on here, I just went like this, slid this down, and then I closed it shut with the turquoise beads. Well, there's no way I could do that with the Fireline. So I'm having to add two rows which is kind of a bummer because 
on my original design, and I'll show you here. This was the first time I made it. See, I ended it with turquoise, but I'm having to add another row of purple now and bronze. Now, the first time I made this, I had so much thread left over that was able to make my little catch cord here and attach it to my lid and then sew back down into this and I still had leftover thread. But because I had to do two more rows, I'm now short thread, but it's everything's okay because I'm still able to finish this. It's just now I'm using the extra thread that I had on my lid to make my little cord to attach to this and then go back to that. So everything is going to work out. It's just I had to, you know, figure out what happened. So Fireline has absolutely uh, no stretch at all. And if this didn't go as smoothly as it did the first time, I probably would have caught this. But um, it was just the very last row here that I was having problems with. So I went ahead, I added another row of purple there, and I'm going to add my very last row here. And you could see this, you, you push this up like this, right? See how the purple's just there at this line? That's where I want to be. So I'm going to pick up four 11 O's. We were doing five all this time, but now we need to shrink this a little bit around here, around this rim. So I pick up these, and then I go through the next center bead, like that. Okay, and I pick up four again, and I go to the next area. And I do this all the way around until I have all my gaps filled. Okay, so like I said, instead of finishing the cord, the catch cord, with this string, I'm going to be, or thread, I'm going to be doing it with the thread from the cap. So there's four again, through here. See when you pull it, how it's sliding up there? And through this one here. Four more. And through my last C bead here. Okay. So pull that tight. So looking now from the top, you should see this. I'm going to leave this right here. This is still going to want to slide off because I didn't tie knots. But um, I'm going to go to this thread now. So I already weaved this up. It's the same stitch. Okay. But I had to play around with the colors. So this, I had to change this too. I had to add one more row to this. Normally this has eight rows. So orange, bronze, purple, turquoise. That's four rows. Okay. And then this is five, six, seven, eight. But I had to add one more row. So orange is going to be closing this off here. So I beaded this and right after you do your uh, your purple row there, you're going to want to push this cap in. Or which row is that? Hold on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After you do your seventh row, put your cap in. Okay. And then do uh, your eighth row. Okay. And then we're going to do our ninth row. See how much tail? I have left on this one and I did start this one with a four inch tail and I apologize that we're running into complications here but you know um, back in the day what I've always did is I would make two three projects and I would find out what all the problems were but since I started doing these subscription boxes I only have one thing that I can make because I only have enough materials for one so I end up uh, running into problems with you guys so the last color I'm supposed to do is orange right yeah oh and I forgot to mention so um, because I'm doing kind of like a stripe pattern here I wanted to continue this pattern on through here so let me do this one row so you could see what this looks like so I need four beads I'm coming out this bead right here. I'm going to go through this turquoise. Okay, and four is going to close in around this. See that like right there? Okay, and maybe I should do one more. I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about. Don't want to confuse anyone. Even though I feel like I am. 
Okay, so I just added that there so you could see what's going on. So see when I put this on here, I kept this color pattern going. So if you look, orange, turquoise, purple, what do we start with? We started with bronze. Um, so uh, bronze, orange, turquoise, purple, bronze, orange, turquoise, purple, bronze, orange, turquoise, purple, bronze, orange. See how it's continuous? So in order to figure this out, how, what color I was supposed to start with, because I was kind of making this backwards, right? I needed to end with orange. What I did is I just went to a piece of paper and I wrote down uh, the letter, the first letter of each color. So I knew that after bronze, I would have orange, so I wrote down an O. And then for turquoise, I did T. For purple, I did P. And then B for bronze. And I repeated that, writing the letters down, nine times. And the last letter I came up with, the ninth letter, I knew was the orange color. So then I had to go backwards up the list after orange is bronze, purple, turquoise. I hope this makes sense, but that's how I did it because I wanted this here to be continuous. All right, so I'm going to continue doing this all the way around. Oh, and remember the first time I did this, I only had eight rows on the cap. And this time, because I'm doing this fire line and there's no stretch to fire line, I had to add one extra row. So that means I had to change the colors again. So I didn't, again, I went back to the paper and I had to write the colors down and then count them. Okay, so I'm just going to go all the way around here and poke myself. Because you just can't make anything, you know, unless you poke yourself. You, especially, with, you got a needle, right? All the way around, right there. Putting in this last row. And I have to reinforce this. So that's what it looks like. And see how it really covers all the wood there at the bottom? And then when I put it on, it'll be like that. And once I get this all tight, you'll barely see the wood there. It's going to look really good once it's done, even though I ran into some problems. So this is the start. And I'm going to pull this tight, but I need to reinforce this a second time. So what I do so I don't lose my place is I go like this and I leave a little loop. Now the other one I didn't bother doing it because I didn't have a lot of tail. But this one I'm going to do it because I do have enough tail here. And I'm just going to go all the way around reinforcing and I'm going to find the loop where I started. Okay, I'm now at the beginning here, and I don't want to get caught up in that loop. I'm not tying knots right now. I'm going to pull this loop, okay, and I'm going to pull this all the way through. I'm going to exit out of this turquoise seed bead, and you know what? I think I'm going to make another pass through here, so this is actually a third pass, but only through that right there because that little bead right there that one seems tiny and that one's chunky so I'm going here that's just how Toho uh, seed beads are but there we go okay I still have a good amount of thread left probably just over a foot and now I'm going to do my little pull cord well it's not pull cord it's a, a cord to catch the lid so we don't lose the lid this is how I do all my beaded bottles I like to have a little cord that connects these two together so you never lose the lid I think all bottles should be made this way, especially water bottles. 
All right, so I'm gonna connect to here. But first I have to pick up my beads and I wanted to keep this pattern continuous. So I'm gonna go, what is it? I'm gonna go with orange, bronze, follow my pattern, purple, turquoise. Orange, bronze, purple, turquoise. Orange, bronze, purple, turquoise. Orange, bronze, purple, turquoise. Orange, bronze, purple, turquoise. Okay, and I'm doing this, I think it was seven times. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then I have two more rows left. So it was, what did I finish off? Okay. Orange, bronze, purple, turquoise. Orange, bronze, purple, turquoise. Slide this down. Okay, so if you remember when I had finished this the first time, I ended with turquoise and I had to add two more colors. And what I like to do is I like to start this strand here with the color that I end, ended with, which was orange, so it's orange, and then I repeat my pattern, right? And then I ended with turquoise, which would have attached to the turquoise, but I had to add two more colors and so that I have bronze on bronze, because I want to connect these together. So after turquoise is orange and then bronze, so I'm adding those two there so that my bronze bead touches this last row. This is no big thing. This is just how I like it. You could do your cord however you want. You could do it all one color if you wanted to. But I like to do the stripes like that. Okay. Now this, I only had one around one time and I have this short tail left. Now I will edit in, if I can, at the beginning um, to do more thread or whatever at the beginning I'll, I'll make some changes but um, I only went through here one time and what I normally do is I would go through here a second time pull this up make sure it's real tight around there and then uh, go through it two or three times and then I would weave back down uh, tying knots in this okay and then this I attach this to this I go back through here I go up into the cap and I tie knots in the cap but because this is shorter I'm going to have to improvise so I have my little leash there so I don't lose my uh, case and what I'm gonna do I'm coming out here right and I have the idea that I'm going to go through this purple seed bead right here okay so there's my last beads that I added in this row okay right here's my tail they're both both tails are going in the same direction I'm gonna go through here try not to let those beads come off I'm gonna sew back up through all of these seed beads I'm gonna turn around and come back down into the case Hopefully my idea works. So the way I said that I would originally do it, that's the way I recommend that you do it. But because I had such tight thread, I had to do two more rows. So I'm doing it this way. But here I go. I'm going through all of these. Okay, so now I have two that thread passes in here. And then I'm going to go through here and I'm going to zoom in because I don't want to pick this up and make the beads fall. So I'm coming out this side, okay? But I want to go through this side to attach this. So I'm going to go through there. Okay. So now that's attached good. I have no slack. I'm going to stitch back down through this. And I'm going to try and tie my two threads together is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to try and close, or I'll just close it up and then tie them or something. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. We'll see what happens. Okay, through here. Going back through, going down a third time now. Okay. Coming up that bronze bead right there. Okay. The whole goal 
is to get this tight so now that I'm coming out the bronze I'm gonna go back through this purple and I'm gonna go in the same direction that my other tails going okay I got through four bronze I need to get through this purple bead okay and then both of my tails yes we are at the same spot okay this is gonna work yeah alright so now I have this where'd it go why does it look weird yeah I think this is gonna work so I'm going to take my other thread and put it through this needle I've done this a lot where I I put both tails through the same needle and I weave them together into the project tying knots I was wondering if I should skip over the purple seed bead because that would make it tighter but then my thread would be exposed on the top but I might have to do that hmm I'm gonna pass through here I'm gonna have to tie seed beads around this because there's no way tie seed beads I'm gonna have to tie knots around this as I go because I don't have enough thread I'm gonna zoom out now I don't have enough thread to um, reinforce this a second time and then tie knots so I'm gonna have to tie knots right here okay so pulling this tight and again I'm only doing this because I had that problem you guys don't have to do it this way so just like that go through the loop twice pull that tight as I can and it didn't get tight on me so let's see okay there it's getting tight I'll go through that bronze bead there just like that go through here make a loop and pass through this loop twice is it working gosh I hope it's working I think it is I'll go through two beads because I don't have a lot of tail pull that tight go under here go through these two loops I'm gonna go through it one time or should I do tw twice I don't know I have two double thread let's see I want this to be strong there these two this is working this is actually working you know I always somehow I always usually do figure out uh, what to do um, I'll go through one more bead and then I guess I would tie another knot and I'm gonna try and reinforce this as much as possible getting around here even if I can't um, like this gets too short what I'll do is I'll pass the needle through. I've, I've done this so many times. I'll pass the needle through. I'll re-thread it to get through the bead if I have to. But I just want to make that tight around there. there I do not want to restart this. I don't want to re-film this. I don't want to uh, go through a lot of trouble editing it. But uh, there it is. It looks really awesome. I worked so hard on it. I kind of do wish that I had a second needle case so I could have had one completed and then I would have uh, figured out that problem with the thread and come back and uh, this video probably would have been shorter but this is it. I hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial I'm so sorry we ran into problems um, this thread up here I forgot to mention I will have to tie this in I'll go into the bronze and then I'll tie knots here through the purple beads and I'll weave down going around you know following old thread paths I'll do the same on this side and try this on the glass bottles at the Dollar Tree. It's so much fun. But like I said, I think you would have to increase this down here. Instead of doing six, you might have to do eight to go around the bottle. And if you go back to my original beaded bottle tutorial, that video will help you. And in that video, I didn't use name brand seed beads. I think I just used um, cheapo seed beads. And I just picked out what I could that was uniform in order to make those. So again, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I worked so hard on this, I wish I didn't have any problems. And um, please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and make sure you click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos. And check me out on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.